Hi, I'll be taking you through the process of identifying an osteoastoma and treating it. As we know, most of these lesions are found in the pediatric age. They're more of an intraarticular and osteal. And they're often tricky to identify and treat also. Clinical presentation would be excessive night pain, believed in analysis 6. There's a lot of issues in diagnosis, and that's the reason the, most of the children come late to us. You can find these on x-rays sometimes, but there's a lot of bone formation or bone deposition. But more characteristically, MRI and CT scan helps us to identify these lesions with a nidus and a sclerotic rim. A limited CT is often sufficient. We don't have to cover the whole limb and a thin cut of 1 mm is mandatory. Bone scan also can help us in identifying the uptake in all the three phases. So with the confirmation of these sort of lesions, just another case example wherein we had this child with many test reports being inconclusive and I could find that there was a nice bone formation with a thick nidus. There are a lot of mimickers also. One needs to keep that in mind. Management-wise, the gold standard would be still CT-guided minimum invasive procedure. That is a radiofrequency ablation. This is generally done on a daycare procedure. Criteria is to ensure that we are away from the neurovascular bundle or the skin to prevent thermal injuries. So this child also had a lot of bone deposition with the nidus being active. We could identify the nidus with a thick sclerotic rim. And as an alternative, we try to go just with a CT guard drilling under general anesthesia. This could be a standalone procedure or a part of the CT guided radio frequency ablation. And it has equitable reports compared to the radio frequency ablation. So what do we do when there are certain tricky situations? Like recurrence, juxta articular, long nidus. You know, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and just check. Like the spinal osteodostromas, we have to be very careful to ensure that there's no thermal damage to the epidural space. Long nidus or multicentric nidus, definitely we can repeat them we may have to find out alternatives. If it is intra-articular, we often have to find out the cause for the problem, whether it could be the joint issue or it could be lesion issue. Thick cortex lesions, definitely we are having a lot of help with a opposite entry and a good drill. Recurrent or residual lesions, definitely they're treatable, the compliance is good, and surgery is often not required. So what are the advantages? Daycare, keyhole or pinhole, literally no bleeding, and we have got happy kids and happy parents. Thank you so much for watching.